Hey, uh, other PlayStation news. Sony has lost nearly 2 million PlayStation Plus subscribers uh, ever s- since they reworked the service a few months ago. So in a financial report, basically, Sony revealed that um, it has dropped from uh, 47.3 million subscribers uh, from the end of June uh, to 45.4 million uh in September. So that's a decrease in 4%, but that is still, Hey, you know, 2 million people that, that have dipped out since, since it first opened up. Uh, what do you think about that? It's interesting. I I wonder what the reason uh, of that is, uh, specifically. Um, and I don't know if it's necessarily like solely the fault of the new system or, or the the new service with the different tiers and that being confusing, or it's a lack of good games that are coming out, or it's just the lack of uh, you know people playing Sony for these little things anymore. Um, I feel like now more than ever for me, Sony has become the first party mas- machine, um, and I, I yep. use it for first party games. Um, and I think there's been a lot of games that have come out this year that maybe make people not want to go back and play some of those older games. And really, when I hear a lot of these things, it's not like I'm suddenly drawn to come back to, to Sony because they're, they're not releasing the new stuff on there. I mean, how much stuff on Game Pass do you get that's new that I feel like even if I do have my subscription there, um, it is going to be worth it to even just turn on a game after a couple months and just try it out, see if I like it or not. I don't know if I get that same feeling with uh, PlayStation Plus that I do uh, with uh, Game Pass. So, yeah, agreed. Uh, like, I, w- I I think that like people love to, people like to compare Game Pass to PS Plus. And I think that that sort of comparison, if you are looking to subscribe to PS Plus as a new subscriber, will only do you poorly because they're not the same, right? I think the comparison is legit and valuable um, it, it, to rather to contrast each one than really compare them because I think there's just not that much similar other than just like you pay a fee to play games for free, right? I do think uh, to play I, like a, a large library. I do but, think yeah, with, with this like rebrand though, they the comparisons eat more easily lend themselves to each other. Agreed. Um, because they are really putting that library front and center when they had a lot of these same games on the uh, what was that the streaming one um, PlayStation Now. Um, people mm. just did not hear that or use that or think about that. But now that it is front and center, it's really hard for you to look at that and be like, "Ooh, it's worth it," or "Ooh, it's not worth it." Um, but yeah, I don't. I, I guess what I'm trying to uh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I, I guess what I was trying to say is though that like people might have jumped onto PS Plus, whatever premium or whatever it's called, uh, thinking that expecting it to be Game Pass, and the problem is while they're similar, uh, Game Pass has new games on it, right? Like like it launches games on it, and I'm I understand that like hey, what was it? Roller Drome and Stray both launched on uh, for free on the premium tier, but like. That's two games, right? Whereas with Game Pass, if you have a subscription to Game Pass, every month you're going to get like a few brand new like launching titles, right? October, November, uh, we've got Somerville is is launching. Uh, Signalis just launched. Like there's plenty of new things. They might not all be huge things. Like Xbox is, has not had like a super solid year in terms of first party games. I don't even think they've had one. Uh, the, I think one actually is coming up later this month. Um, Pentiment. It's the Obsidian game. Drafted right? that. Um, I imagine that's going to be very good. Um, it's but like be 71, fuckers. <laughs> but like what I'm trying to say is like uh, Game Pass like has that going for it and PS Plus just simply doesn't. And I think that if you subscribe to it hoping to see what that was, like hoping to, for it to be Game Pass, I think you're going to unsubscribe and be a little disappointed because it's just not that. Do you know what I'm saying with and, that? And I do think part of that has to do with you get the bump of the people trying out a service for when it first comes out and like seeing totally. what it's like and then kind of like going back and forth with that. Um, so I think part of this is a, a natural progression of what happens when you get a new service or new subscription. But ultimately, they've not done enough, in my opinion, to get me to come back to this and keep it. Um, so when my subscription gets up at the end of December, am I going to go back to get the uh, what, what tier am I on? Premium? 
extra, whatever the, I don't know if I'm going to do that again, because I don't know if I use it enough as of now to do that. And I don't feel like I'm going to benefit from just letting these new games come on and be like, oh, now I can play Ratchet and Clank from uh, Up Your Arsenal and still like, like make that be worth it anymore. I feel like PlayStation has a, this is pretty emblematic of like a lot of PlayStation's historical uh, like missteps where they announce a service and then don't support it. You, like, like they start out like, hey, we've got, you know, PlayStation Plus Extra or hey, we've got PS Now or whatever. Uh, and they launch it and then it just doesn't really go anywhere or do anything. Same with like this PlayStation Stars thing that I signed up for. Like th- there's some stuff you can do in there, but like I-, I feel like they haven't really done any sort of push to be like, hey, here's why this is cool. Or hey, here's why you should care and keep caring. Right. Um, and I feel, and a lot of companies have that issue, but I, I feel like this is just one of those things. I feel like Sony's quick to drop those things too when they don't become successful because it's not making money. They don't look at the long picture, and I think that's one thing that you know, regardless of what you think about Xbox, I think their their long picture view is about getting people to be invested in their uh, ecosystem and to get people to stay yeah. there. And they they might not be making as much money now, um, but long term, people are going to be stuck in Xbox. Um, it sounds like a negative thing, but they, they're going to want to stay there because they have all this stuff that they're, that they're used to and everything. And I just think Sony's so quick to cut ties with stuff. So that's why people are cutting also, ties with you. I think it's worth pointing out though, that like Microsoft has the ability to do, to like run things for so long and not make money just because they're fucking Microsoft. And Sony, I would say is in a much, much different position. Um, but I, I think that that still all stands pretty well, but uh, I, I think that they were they were down in subscribers, but up into like total profits or whatever. I don't think this is necessarily a bad sign. I think it's just interesting. Um, and I mean, hey, they still have 45 million people subscribe to this. So like. I think you're fine. <laughs> That's like fine. almost a billion, right? When we count it up. Yeah. It, you know, if you round up very generously. Yeah, that's almost a billion yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. 